Leader Podcast. Golly, it's one of my favorite and most motivating people is online today with us. Coach Stutzman, how are you, sir? I'm doing great, man. Just uh, gearing up for a high university on Saturday, my man. There you go. Okay. So here's, I have so many things I want to ask you. you you've kind of, you've done a, you've done it all in this sport. You've kind of, you've taken small town PA schools to, to pretty big heights. You, you've come into you buff and, and you've, you've taken it. Like, I remember you talking to me about, you know, privately about like, man, it's, it's difficult in the city because Buffalo is a city it's as a opposed city. to like, as opposed to going to, you know, the, the local water and hole and pulling your kids out. And like, right. it's trickier, man. So, so give us some of the things that, that you weren't expecting to be different at a city university as opposed or a big university, as opposed to a small university. Well, here's what I can tell you. So when I was at Bloom, and I'll tell you what, there's nothing like a wrestling town, Bloomsburg. Yeah. It, it was an unbelievable place. Loved my time there. Loved the people. They just loved it, right? But sure. I knew every Friday night I was getting phone calls. Yeah. Right? Right. The, okay. The, the, the bartenders or the bouncers or the whoever, they would just call me up like, hey, man, you know, you're, you you got to come get a couple guys. Right? Yeah. It, it, just, it was just a, it was a smaller type group. I shouldn't say sure. every night. Right. But right. No, but, but there were instances. Right. Yeah. Right. If like, it was just, it was different. Right. It was yeah. like, uh, I'd go down to Bloom Diner and I'd walk in and I'd get free breakfast every morning. Right. 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 Like, right. Right. Like you had those type of things that the relationships you built in those small towns it was unbelievable. It was like nothing, I've, nothing I've ever experienced in my life. Right. You know, and, and I, and I loved every second of it, you know, and, and the difference here is, you know, I, I don't have as much, um, we control our kids a lot, right? Yeah. But they can hide. Yeah. <laughs> right, they can hide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm I, I got a good story for you. I'm I got listening. A, I, got, I got a good story for you. And this is how, and I love my guys. And and I don't know if you know Nick Stampoul is a Jersey kid. Yeah. I probably shouldn't blow a spot up like this. By <laughs> time. Okay, so one night about 1130, let, 1130 at night, man, I started getting all these texts. They tagged me on a text. They didn't know they didn't know I was in on this text. They're like, hey, we're running, we're going here, we're going there. You know, hey, let's meet us there. And then like 1:30 in the morning, I wake up. I don't sleep much. I wake up and I go, I'll meet you guys there. <laughs> they, they all look at their phone. So like, holy shit, we messed up, you know. So know. coach, so, coach, what I'm the next say day, this. you know. Like I said, we got them right, but but it's just, it's just different, man. That's that's the biggest challenge, probably socially, yeah. Um, academically, you know, when I was at Bloom, I had access to every single professor, right? Right. I walk down campus. I'd be like, hey, blah blah blah. Have good conversations, you know. Here, I'm not allowed to have a conversation with professors. Yeah. So so it's different like that, right? And and wait, you're not allowed to? I'm not allowed. Like, I cannot call the professor up like, hey, what do you think about Johnny's grades? Right. I have to go through our academic support staff. They have to do it. If that makes sense, like they, they circle. First of all, everything. I understand the concept. Does it make sense? I don't think so. No, 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 <laughs> no they, I don't. It, it's just a way. So there's no academic integrity, academic fraud, right? Like they don't want right. me to employ the professors. Hey, give this guy an A, you butthole. You know what I mean? Like, like, well, that has happened none of that. in the past. <laughs> I will say this, not with you, but I know yeah. some of my app. I remember, and I will blow the kid's spot up since you're, since we're blowing this kid. Another Jersey kid, Scott Winston, was at Rutgers. Yeah, yeah. And when he, so we, we had a 97-pounder there, um, and he looked like a problem. Like, he looked like bald head. Go T, right. 197 pounds, probably 7% body fat. Just look mean. And he, right. he, he was mean. <laughs> so he would, so Winston used to go to his classes if he was failing and just, if the other guy would stand behind him with his arms crossed going, listen, here's the deal. 
this goes, this guy's going to beat my ass if I don't get a C in this class. Could right. you, just a C. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, that has happened before. I get hey, it. Now, now, do you run into Carl Fraunhofer out there at all? Ha- Fraunhofer? No. Yeah. He's no. out He's out in your area somewhere. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Look, find him out there. Okay. Uh, but uh, he does beat the streets L.A. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, so he kills it, man. He, he's my guy. But uh, Matt Moley. So we had a um, Matt Moley had a, like a um, had a you know he was struggling in a class uh-huh. and a grade were turned in and our compliance at Bloom one year he goes you need to get in touch with the professor before the grades get you know published yeah 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 you know so we find a professor in Arizona poolside <laughs> like, <laughs> hey man <laughs> like hey buddy you gotta help us man he's gonna be a three time All American you know and um. <laughs> Lo and behold, man, we got a C plus, baby. Woo! <laughs> guess what? Hey, that's the difference. What'd you major in? Eligibility. That's, that's it. it. That's baby. what I. That's what I majored in. C's, baby. I majored in C's. <laughs> and that's the di- and that's the difference. Like, yeah. like those things are the difference, man. And, yeah. and both places got their, you know, they're good and bad, right? But sure, like, sure, sure. The difference, man, and yeah. and and. and you know, I grew up in Wilmington, Delaware, kind of a big area, but I'm a, a small town guy by heart, man. I sure. love it. I love the small towns. Yeah, there's there's something. Um, and like you said, you know, small town wrestling town. Well, that's yeah. even that's like that's like awesome. You know what I mean? Like we kind of get that here in Poway. I understand like San Diego is a you know yeah. is a bigger city, but we're not San Diego. Right. Right. Like we're we're like we are in this little right. Poway bubble. And yeah, we go to Kaminsky's and it, it's kind of cool and they they treat you well and, and that kind of stuff. And it's really, really nice. So I I want to I want to kind of switch gears a little bit. And I want I want to talk about how you go through your recruiting process. What does that look like? What are the what are the boxes that a kid needs to check? In, in in your regards, like what boxes? Like, all right, he has to be this, this, and this. Well, here at the University of Buffalo, I only get two special admits a year. Uh-huh. Okay, so when I first got hired, and 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 we could get if you got through the eligibility center, we could get anybody in the school, right? Regardless if it was scholarship or non scholarship, right? So our recruiting was different over the last ten years, five years, per se. Now I only get two of those spots now on mm. special admins. So the average SAT score to get in right now is a 1250 to a 1300. Jesus. Right. So, so, so I, and I only get two special admins, right? right? So I, I get two guys around maybe a thousand, 950 maybe. Right. So, so that academically, this place is like a university of Michigan or North Carolina. Uh, mm. Like it's an AAU institution, the big time AAU institution. Okay. So, that's where it's changed for me. And, and, and maybe I struggle a little bit adapting to that a little yeah, bit. Sure. Because once again, I'm a, I'm a kid went to junior college first. I'm a kid that, that takes chances on guys. Sure. Right? Like, so I, I've had to adjust. Okay. So right now our recruiting looks like 1100, 1200 SAT. So you, you're, you're not even before you, like, obviously they get on your radar because of their athletic ability. Right. However, you don't even worry about the kid if you can't get a 1200 on. I can't get a man, right? Yeah. I only get a couple of those guys. Right, 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 right. Right here, right? So now, of course, we look at, you know, you're going to look at your state titles and, 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 but I like work ethic, as you know, you know, mm. passion and work ethic. They're, those are two things. And, and if you have two of those things, ingredients, you're probably going to be pretty good in high school. Sure, sure. <laughs> so how do you, ju- yeah, okay, that's fine. And, and it's, but how do you judge work ethic? And a kid that you don't see every day. How do you judge them? It's different nowadays, right? You know, I think I, I you hear a lot of coaches say they don't work as hard. And I'm not saying that's true because I think they do. I think they probably work. I think the best kids are better than ever before. Yeah. Well, that's it, true. It, it, it's like they're 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 phenomenal. Yes. Okay. Well, I know I'm not getting that kid. That kid's gonna go to Penn State. That kid's right. gonna go to, you know, yeah. you just gotta understand where you're at. And that, you sure. Know, um so if I get a kid that good, then he probably has some kind of baggage. What's the baggage? 
Yeah. And and, and, and can you handle the baggage? Can you manage the baggage? Oh, I didn't right? think that about that. Because that, 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 that now becomes just mitigating your own sanity for the yeah. next for the next four or five years yeah. like uh yeah okay i can deal with that brand of crazy yes no i can't deal with that brand of crazy oh right. shit i never thought about that you know and because at the end of the day we're the university of buffalo we're not michigan right right yeah. like they're going to get to who they want to get because they're michigan right right and we're going to get some we we may get one or two of those kids but there's usually a reason and, and you got to figure out what the reason is and can you operate inside that reason Oh, you know, wow. And, 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 and so what's a non starter for you? Because for me, it would be crazy as dad. Like, if dad wants to move to Buffalo with a kid, right? Oh, it's out. I I'm can't out. do it. I can't do it. I just had this talk with Frank Beasley yesterday. You know, be, Beasley's my guy, right? He yeah, wrestled for me. Best. Yeah. He wrestled for me. I don't know if anybody knows that. I did. I, I, I got him started in the job in the game, right? Sure. And, and I, you know, we talk every day. Do you really? Every single day. Yeah, he's the best, dude. And uh, and and we just we're always you know we we get this man like and and wrestling people are crazy, yeah. right? Look here, the best example I can I can, my daughter plays high level volleyball player. Uh -huh. My other daughter's a really good gymnast. So my daughter was in volleyball club, and uh, and I got a little lippy. I became one of those crazy parents. <laughs> yes. Right? And then I had to stop <laughs> myself and take a step back. I'm like, I became that asshole. Yeah. I'm that dude. I'm that dude. I'm that dude right now. Oh, so shit. now, yeah. So now I don't go any, I don't, I take her to practice. I sit in the car. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't ask her. I say, I go, are you doing your best? Yes. That's all I care about. So she committed to the University of Tennessee, SEC for volleyball. Yeah. So like, so I'm like, you know, so you know how that is, man. Mm -hmm. so, and then, and then my, my gymnast daughter, I let her do her thing. Cause I don't understand it. I don't understand gymnasty. I like anything that's judged. I'm like, wait, what? I don't get that. My daughter does right. the, uh, the color guard thing. Yeah. I don't get it at all. I'm like, I, I'm like, explain to me how you are getting these scores. She's right. like, well, it's sometimes it's this. I'm like, don't give me sometimes. Right. That doesn't like bullshit sometimes. That's no, right. like how, are, like, how are we getting better? And I train, you know, I, I started training her like I would train wrestlers. Right. And it wasn't, it's not the same. It's just my, not. My gymnast daughter should wrestle. Yeah. She got it. But she's too into She's too into uh, gymnastics. Did yeah, my daughter practice? tried one practice and she came over to me at a water break and she was like, this is gross. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard to argue with her because yeah. what we do is kind of gross. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then my little guy, so, my little guy wrestles, man. He loves it. I, I, you know, he was wrestling this weekend. He did really good. I got good coaches around him. Though. I got Jeff Catcherbone coaching him right now, you know, so he got some really good people around him. So I just, I stay the hell away. <laughs> well, you know what's funny? All right, so th let's let's bring it I'm back. Rambling, man. I apologize. No, no, no. Don't be sorry. I just, I, you know, I, I hope people, some people are entertained with just two dudes catching up sometimes, right? Because, yeah, yeah. like, it, it, that's kind of what's going on. Um, but let's let's kind of bring it back to you, sports. And <clears throat> you have dished your son off in the sport to someone else. Yes. Doug Schwab has dished his son off to someone else. Brandon Egham has dished his... These are all high-level athletes, coaches that are dishing their sons off to other people. That didn't happen 25 years ago. No, not at all. Why not? Well, I can tell you why I did it. So, you, I don't know if you remember my brother-in-law, Bryce Hausman. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, Man, I've trained him. I've been around him my whole life, right? I sure. hired him here for a little bit, you know, and um, it didn't work. What Too do you mean? Cold. It, I was, I'd go if we 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 left the office. I'm calling him at home. It was never, it was never just family time. It was never like we 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 were always buddies, but yeah. then it, it, we became not buddies because it was always business, mm. right? So. And my father-in-law told me a long time ago, he said, man, when I used to get in, because he coached Bryce in high school, 
He said, man, when I used to get in a car, we never talked about wrestling. Mm -hmm. And I find that really hard for me to do as yeah. with, with, with Bryce as when he was competing, he lived with me at Bloom. He lived mm -hmm. with my house. Right. And then, and then, you know, just coaching with them and at the OTC and all that stuff. And it, it ruined our relationship for a lot of years, a lot of years. Really? Yeah. And, and, and I don't want that for my kids. Yeah. Right. So, so now we're, we're good again. Right. We, 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 you know, rekindle, you know, yeah, right? sure. But because wrestling's too hard and, and I don't want to lose friends anymore or, or, or family members because of wrestling. And I think that's what wrestling does. You're so ultra competitive and type a all the time. You're always pushing. You never take a break. You just wear people down, sure. you know, and, and, and I don't want that anymore, man. I'm a different person today than I was five years ago and different than I was 15 years ago. You know, I'm so into it, but I'm yeah, no, it's different though. No, no, no. I understand. I, I, I hear what you're saying. Was there a specific instance or was there a specific action that made you go, I, I got to change. I, this is too much. Yeah, it, it was, it, to be honest with you, when, when my daughter started getting into their sport, yeah. right? I'm like, man, I need to be a dad. Yeah. Right. She didn't need another coach. She got a coach. She got a coach, man. Right. I, like I need to be a better dad. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was very important to me. You know what I mean? A good dad. So, so I kind of took a step back and really started spending more time with my kids away away from the building, which mm -hmm. I never did in my life. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm, I'm better today than I was yesterday because of my kids. So, so, you know, you know what I mean? So, Oh yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. But I never thought like that because I didn't have a dad growing up. Right. 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 So, so it was always just me. Right. So I was kind of selfish in that way a little bit. Oh, that's interesting. So how, how has that bled into your professional career? How has that, how have you taken that and and applied it to being the head coach at University of Buffalo? I'm more patient now with 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 these guys because so my daughter would come home and she'd be upset about practice, right? I kind of listen to her a little bit. I'm not allowed to talk, right? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> but, but but I listen to her concerns. Like I was just like paying attention a little bit. Well, my guys got the same. My guys talk the same way. Sure. Coach is hard on me. Coach doesn't like me. Or he wants a lot out of me. You know, so she was saying the same thing that my guys were saying sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm like, well, your coach likes you. You're the hardest working guy, person on the court or, or whatever. It's not it. They're just challenging you. So listen to her perspective made me learn about what, what these guys are thinking, too. If that makes sense, like, oh, like, yeah. So, because she's 17, 18 years old, she's their age. Right. Right. She's a teenage kid, like they are. And she's dealing with high performance and anxiety or whatever it is, or right. all that stuff. Right. So, that helped me out. That, that, that helped me tremendously. Like, to mm. kind of, man, I can't push that hard. I can push, but I can't, but you got to push differently. You know what I mean? Mm. You, 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 hey, 20 years ago, you know, I mean, at Bloom, man, we we worked, yeah. right? We yeah. work hard now, but we don't work like that, mm. right? We just don't do that, you know, and because I'm listening more. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and we had some great teams at Bloom. We had uh we had John Saritas on. Yep. And and he said when he first got the job at Poly. He was like, he was working them into the ground. Like yep. he was working them into the ground. And then Chewy, I think Chewy was the first one uh, to to suggest this, but they took a Google sheet and they just asked the kids like questions. Like, how are we doing in this department? How, what do you like about this? What do you dislike? Right. And they're like, we ain't the track team, man. Right. We ain't the track team. Like we, we came here to wrestle and, oh yeah, by the way, Cal Poly is a pretty good school. We came here for a degree. Like, right. so I did the same thing a little bit. You know, I, I did the same thing a little bit because we, when I first got here, I took the Bloomsburg model, right? Yeah. Like blue collar kids and, and, you know, under underrated kids and, 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 and working real hard made them really good. Right. And, 
And but we had great assistance. We had great people around us at the time, and we've had that here. But but I've taken that and and we wrestle, we we drill more, we we, we work on skills more, right? Mm-hmm. We we because at the end of the day, they they if they want to do it, if they, they didn't want to do it, they wouldn't be here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's you right. know, so you oh, that's, a, that's a, yeah, that's, that's a great mindset to have. Like you obviously like this enough right. to do it at this level. You know, me, me beating the, the tar out of you every day with lifts and runs and right. live wrestling goes that are 60 minutes long. And right. like, what the heck, what are we talking about? Right. Wow. You know, so I give off every Wednesday and every Sunday during the week. Okay. Every Sunday Wednesday. and Wednesday. Sunday and Wednesday, they need to rest. Yeah, they need to rest, and you know, not they want to come in. Now we, our guys, come in. Yeah, right? they come in, and you know, but it's, but it's, I don't want to use the word play wrestling, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, they, 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 they roll around, they, they, they put themselves in their positions they want to be good at. Yeah, you know, I have my son's really into it. Like he really enjoys wrestling, and um, awesome. he yesterday, like so he's dealing with like a groin pull or something like that. Just nothing crazy, but it's just like right. annoying. And I'm like, I get it. I'm I'm like, you need to take three days off. You have to right. like, cause otherwise it's just going to be this thing. And so like I had a private lesson um, and I, I go get in the truck and he's in the truck. I'm like, what, what are you doing? He's like, well, I just going to come. I'm just going to come. Right. This son of a bitch calls his buddy to meet him at the gym. And he's just like, he's, he's, drilling low level attacks i'm like hey 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 stupid <laughs> like you've got a groin thing he's like yeah it feels better today like, right until okay. tomorrow <laughs> yeah until tomorrow and like you know he's surfing all day today which is oh, that's good awesome. yeah like you can that's kind of what i'm pushing him towards right now right i'm trying to stoke that fire so that he has something else because he right. just if it was up to him He'd be in that doggone wrestling room every yeah. day. So, so how do you deal with that type of stuff? Because you said the guys are going to come in the room, yeah. right? How do you deal with like, hey, you need to take a day off before? Like, we're in February, dude. Right. This is February. The the postseason is right around the corner. You need to be rested. Do you have to have like these uncomfortable, like, hey, sit your ass down conversations? So I got so one of the hardest working kids I've ever been around, and he knows wrestling is Nick Stan Pulis, kid out of Jersey, yeah. right? And and he's just coming on, man. He's a super kid. On his recruiting trip, he pulled up he pulled up Arson for side videos. Love it. I'm like, oh shit, that's my guy. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. And uh, but he's the guy. He's one of the guys, man. Every day, man, I got to pull him back. Um, today I got him up early in the morning to do yoga. There you go. You know, and yes, I, I make them all get in a cold plunge every day. Yeah. Like I literally physically, like I, like walk them down. Right. And, and you can't, they won't do it. They won't do it. <laughs> they won't do it. They don't believe that. Hey, they're 19 years old, man. They're full of piss and vinegar. You know, yeah. you can't tell them what to do. Yeah. You know, I'm like, man, I, I, so I'm always preaching that. Like, and I tell them, man, right now you're all the, all the haze in the barn. Doesn't matter what you do today. You're not getting in better shape. No. You literally can't. Like it's like you literally can't. So Carl Fon Opera told me it's a long time ago. I'll never forget it. And I give him a lot of credit. He said it's better to be undertrained than overtrained. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's like this. Here's I'm gonna ask you this question. Okay. Mm-hmm. When do high school kids or most kids wrestle the best? When do they re- oh if our, oh in the summer? Yep. Why? Because they're rested. Yeah. I want and fat and happy. That's right. That's 100% right. right. So 100% how do you right. replicate that in March. Yeah. You have to take time off. Got to. You have to. Have to. Oh, man. That is funny. I never thought about it like that. I never freaking thought about it like that. So for me, okay, there. So I'm also in a very different position, right? Like there, a lot of my kids, uh, for lack of a better term, and I'm going to use this term, it's going to sound abrasive, but it's, it's coming from a place of like, I've seen the best in the world training. Like I, so it's like, 
for so I'm in a different place in that most of my kids suck. <laughs> Right. And like, and I say that and I, and Joel's laughing because he, he, uh, you know, looks at Poway as like, fuck, okay, probably going to win a state title right. for in the country. Yeah, that's great. But they suck positionally. They just do. There are certain kids on my team. I'm like, how do you not, how do you win matches? I don't, I have no idea, but they do. And so like, I have to go and go, I have to, like, you need, you are seriously deficient in your head hands defense you are seriously deficient in your reattack skills so i only have x amount of time in my week right. how do you mitigate like I, these kids got to get better but they also need rest like where where's the the threshold in your brain so for for me i so i i people go and and, and i get this a lot okay they're like oh you guys don't have a plethora of offense because we're not the most talented kids, right? Like if I'm not the most athletic guy, yeah. I'm not going to have a plethora of offense, right? Right. So what I do is I train them in a, in a system where nobody wants to wrestle in a certain system. And I don't right. let them wrestle outside the system, right? right? So head hand head hands defense is one of them. Right. You're not coming into my room. You're not watching a lot of dirty flow takedowns of the week. Remember those right. back 20 years ago, yes. right? Yes. So I think I think that's what happened, right? Every 20 years ago, Flo put dirty takedown of the week, but they're not showing all the baseline defense. They're just showing right. the funk. So everybody's right. going right to the funk. Right. So I don't allow it until it's their personal time. So every day, head of hands defense, no matter what. Like I pick right. I pick two areas or three areas every week and, and we and we beat them like we just beat them down. I just right. beat them hand fight because we're not off. We're not very fast. We're not fast twitch, right? So we're, we're going to hand fight a guy into oblivion. We're going to grab gonna, him by the ears and we're yeah, going to pull him down. Pull him down. Short offense. Um, baseline deep. That's the OJ Robinson system. Yes. Yes. Okay? There were that, that Minnesota team that had 10 All-Americans was a fucking snooze fest. It was a snooze fest to watch, but they won every match. So, and, and here's where I learned that from. So I worked for Dave Grant at Northern Illinois mm -hmm. for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Dave Grant was a Jay disciple. Jay worked. Dave worked for Jay and was his right hand man through the eighties. Mm -hmm. So, so when they were building that, when, when they, they were, were building it, right? Yeah. Not not in the two thousands when they were good at it, right? In the eighties when he was building it. Wow, that's yeah. interesting. Wow, so I took that philosophy because I knew it worked. I watched it work, right? Mm -hmm. Like I just watched average guys be really good. Yeah, you know now they had Scott Owen who was an average. That guy was no, no, no. But they could make an average guy really successful, really successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's funny, man. It's funny that you bring that up because I was a junior college coach for about eight years, long as eight years, baby. <laughs> long as eight years in fucking life. But anyway, <laughs> that's that's here nor there. I remember one time being at the <clears throat> national tournament, and I was with two of my assistant coaches. And we were looking for the hospitality room and they were starving. They're, they're pissing and moaning that they're starving. You know, we hadn't eaten all day. It's five o'clock. And they go, well, let's go to the hospitality room. We go in there. There's literally not a donut left. Like there's just black coffee. Right. But Jay Robinson is sitting at a table holding court with like 10 dudes. And they're like, we're going down to the concession stand. I'm like, see ya. Yes, yeah, yeah. staying right here. And I remember sitting there listening to him break down a practice. And he said, Why would I spend 60% of my time in the wrestling room with my athletes on offense? We ain't never going to hit. Why right. would I do that? He goes, We got to be great on bottom. Nobody can hold us on bottom. And we got to be great defensively nobody gets to our legs so if i take those two things that i know that i have the opportunity to drill every day why the heck would i be drilling high crotches why the heck would i do that i'm not saying that there's never a time to drill a high crotch but i'm saying if you're going to direct your army to go in this direction what are you taking reps away from from them right. not that so that always kind of stuck with me 
and again, I'm in a very different situation. A lot of the athletes that you get have skill sets that are pretty good. But know? they don't. But to be oh. honest with you, they don't. You don't think so? I, I don't. Not I. It's all relative. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Penn State guys got right. Set, but but I guarantee you, Kale's still working on their skill set. Mm. Right, like you know, but it's all relative. Like you're trying to win a state title. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's like us trying to win a. Uh, you know, have a guy be an all American. It's like, right. guy, it's all relative, right? That's mm -hmm. how I think the best way I can put it. You know, yeah, we want higher level guys like you, but mm -hmm. most guys don't, most guys like fundies, they don't have any fundies anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, you know, I yeah. talk to Delhi all the time, right? No fundies. Yeah. No fundies, right? Because mm -hmm. we're, we're brought up. Yeah. You do, you do private lessons, right? And you do club. But most of these clubs, what do they do? They go to tournaments to go wrestle eight matches in a tournament. Not me, man. Golf. If it was up to me, I, I think, I, honest to go, and maybe this is leads me to my next question. If you were building a club tomorrow, or like a high school wrestling club right. down, how many competitions would you go to a year? Not much. But here's what I can tell you. My, my son goes, Daddy, I want to be good at wrestling. Mm -hmm. we wrestled in, in three years we wrestled 15 matches yeah. it, it, you're going to get hurt you're you wonder why guys got shoulder injuries now yeah. knee injuries and you wrestle how old is your son if you don't mind me asking he's 10 okay yeah see that's perfect you know i told i used to lie to my son he hates when i tell this story on, online <laughs> i used to lie to him i'm like yeah you're not allowed to compete until you're 12 like that's the rule right he's like really Son of a gun. And then he'd see like his buddies come back with right, trophies right. and he's like, Daddy, what's that? Mm, yeah, yeah. You know? So, and I used to, I also told him, I, I lied to him. I said, You weren't allowed to touch the legs until, right. until you were uh, like 10 or something like that. And he'd come up to me like, Daddy, that boy's cheating. That right, boy's right. cheating. He's grabbing my legs. I'm like, oh, he's, He looks young. Well, you know, in New York, you can wrestle varsity at seventh and eighth grade. Yeah. I'm not doing that. He's, yeah. he's, He's in fifth grade, so he's two years away. We're not doing that. Mm. We're we're not doing that. We're gonna learn to be better wrestlers. So it's interesting, man. All right. So then sorry well, about that. No, 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 no. So I just want to make sure that so that's for fifth grade. Yeah. But in your estimation, like there is something to be said for learning how to compete. And that I'm telling you, my son. I did the same model. Right. I didn't. I didn't. He didn't wrestle a competitive match until right. sixth grade. Like he didn't put a singlet on until sixth right. grade. Um, but by eighth grade, he you was. Go. You gotta yeah. go. Yeah. Okay. So now, you gotta now go. we're talking. Right. Okay. You gotta go. And he was. He was because deficient. You're gonna, get, you're gonna get beat up in high school. You gotta go. Okay. So what's the number? If you had to guess, what's the number of matches? that you would put on the schedule for young athletes in like seventh and eighth grade, man, 30, maybe tops. Yeah. That seems right? to be the number. Yeah, no, that seems to be the number. Tops. Like think about like in high school, they're wrestling 50, 60 matches. When you were in high school, you probably wrestled no more than 115 matches in four years, maybe 120. Oh, in for my high school. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. No, I think my, I think it was a hundred and five or 107 yeah. something like that like it was 22 27 a year if you did well right. you know now it's now it's 60 70 a year you're getting 250 and it's, it's like, wild yeah, yeah that's that's not that there's definitely a point of diminishing returns it's funny i remember i remember looking at that for the first time when jordan oliver made his second final at OSU and going, oh, he has far less matches and right. he's up two way classes. There's some, there's some, like, remember when he was, they were killing yeah. him to get him to 33? Yeah, and he's yeah. just like, no, <laughs> no. And, and I'm not wrestling, uh, you know, I'm not wrestling every freaking right. other day. I'm just not going to, he's just, no. And he lit the world on fire, right. you know, and, and and there's something to be said for that. Right. Is there ever a time that they need to get a hundred matches in a year as never. high school kids? You don't never, think so? Never. Why? Oh. Why? You Just know, I, 
lie. I, I I don't think so. I could be wrong. I'm not really in the scene yet, right? But right. But I know who does a really good job with their kid right now, Jeff Catrabone. He does an awesome job with Cam. Yeah. You know, and and Cam didn't wrestle a ton of matches this year, right? And and you know, and he's healthy and, and yeah. He, so so we'll you know yeah. You know, that's where I'm at. Yeah, thirtieth is thirty ish. I think yeah. is the the seems like the number, right? Like I agree. I don't know if we need more than that, dude. These kids in Poly, they, I mean, John, we don't. Our our A team doesn't wrestle dual mates except for, but you know, against right. Buchanan, right? Like they don't. There's, I mean, we do have the luxury of having a stud JV team. You know what I mean? Like. Like our but, JV but team. until until people make dual meets matter, it's the way it's going to be. That's right. When 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 the local people keep saying that March is all that matters, yeah. Then why wrestle dual meets? And we I'm a have guy, man. I think if you want the sport to flourish, you better get dual meets matter. Yeah. How do we do that? Other than convince Caleb to have national championship. There's a couple people you got to get on board. <laughs> You know, hey, when I was at Bloom, I wasn't for it. Why? Meet, right? Why? Uh, because at a place like that, um, and we had great dual meet teams. Sure. Uh, it, it, when you're not fully funded. Yeah. You, it's hard to be good at dual meets. Sure. It's hard. To sure. Be good. And, and But your job, your job at Bloom especially was to put three guys on the podium every year. I tried. Right. Like, but like, and that's a different model. Yeah. Than winning seven here, out of 10. I tell you the biggest mis misconception here is that we're fully funded. We're not close to fully funded here. Really? We get 7.9. We're two away. Right? right. You get seven, we get 7.9 and out of state tuition and fees and, and everything's $50,000 a year. That's a tough go. And then in state is 32, you know, anywhere between, 29 to 32 that's a lot of money yeah you know so so th there there's some misconceptions here too you know um and then oh, that's I interesting john i i didn't know that and i say that because you know I, I do have a relationship with some of the the coaches out here now right right cbu cal baptist is fully funded fully yeah. funded and they get a ton of financial aid yeah right like like we don't get institutional aid yeah so, so let, let, let's say you're really smart, right? You got a 3.7 GPA at 1,300 SAT. They're going to tell you you have to apply before December, okay? So let's say National national Sign Day is coming in November, okay? I'm going to say, hey, how much is Mike Mao going to get academic money? They won't tell me until February. Mm. Because they don't know what their, they don't know what their pool is going to look like. Mm. So Mike Mao got a 3.7, 1,300, but you know what? He may qualify for 15 grand a year, but, but he won't tell you until later. So in November, you're trying to play with these numbers and you just don't know. Is that similar for all the sports at Buffalo? Yes. Everyone's like that. They just don't, because academically, we, we want to be a public Ivy. Which puts shackles on you. Yes. Especially wrestling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know i like so, wrestling people if 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 your dad's a construction worker i like you yeah. your mom's a teacher dad i like you right that means you probably got some work probably got a lot of work ethic in you yeah um we're, we're gonna know. have to bring this on home soon but i could sit here and talk to you for days yeah i apologize man i took it to a different level today no that's no i i just i i, I guess i guess my I have to close with this. Yeah. How do you compete? How do you compete? Because it's like, you know, it ain't like that almost anywhere. I mean, it's not like that anywhere. I mean, I, I I said almost because I was being not ace, but it's not. How do you how how do you compete every day? You know. And, and and if you look at our schedule, we I go wrestle everybody, man. I've never yeah. backed down from a challenge ever in my life. Um. How man, I I really do believe in what I do. I, I really do. Look, I made a lot, I made mistakes along the way, right? We all do. We're we're human beings, right? But 
But at the end of the day, man, I I I I, I think we do it right. I, I got unbelievable assistant coaches, man. I tell you what, Derek Span has been awesome. Ben Freeman has been great. Alan Clothier has been awesome. Look, this is the first. I, I'm not in the restroom right now because those guys do such a good job with the guys, mm-hmm. you know. And and yeah. so, so I, I, I think you know, but it's not always been rosy. No, I can't <laughs> imagine. I can't imagine. No, you know, I, I can hear you. Okay. Well, before sorry, we bring sorry. it home, um, I'm curious. You mentioned that. Uh, you have kind of a standard system that you're you're yep. running there at Buffalo. And as part of that, obviously, that kind of simplifies what you teach. How do you yep. customize your training to or or customize what's being taught to your athletes while still sticking within a larger system? So I, I believe in this. I believe in you gotta be you gotta have you gotta be really good at short offense, some kind of short offense. You gotta be great at it, right? You got to have a good right leg attack, good left 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 leg attack. Okay, I don't care what it is. You got to be good one side to the other. You mm-hmm. got to be good at finishing high and low, right on the mat, off the mat, right. And then you got to have good baseline defense and good reattacks. What your ride look like, and what your what your bottom look like. And then we customize that kind of into the kid. If that makes sense, like yeah, sure. like. That's we then we'll customize it like you know Tommy Maddox who's an awesome kid he's from a walk on now he's ranked top four in the MAC I mean he's an unbelievable guy and watch him wrestle he doesn't wrestle like our fifty seven pounder yeah. you know what I mean but 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 we allow him to do some different things because he can right <laughs> right, right, right 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 yeah sometimes you gotta let the horses run that's it <clears throat> some, some yeah like these I don't know if that made sense to you but I said yeah no. And is that something that you kind of customize or you kind of message to them of like, hey, hit your best right leg attack. Like that may be a sweep single, that may be a high C, but like go hit your out your best attack right now. Right. So I, I cookie cut, right? Basically, we're, we're that's what we're talking about, cookie cut, right? So um, I'm, I'm, I'm cookie cutting a little bit, right? But so when these guys use their individual times, when they come in on their own, that's when our assistant coaches are their lights out. Right, they'll grab them and 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 they'll roll around and do doing some things that they want to do that that helps them progress a little bit more. Now, it, it's taking me some time to let the range go a little bit, right? Because nobody likes the the you know let the range go, right? Mm-hmm. But but they're a different kid now because they watch so much film. You know, they're they're always watching film. It's it's at their fingertips. So. I got Hunter shot. Do you remember how difficult it was for us to get footage of Fetzayev? I was... got a v- I got a uh, a VHS tape back in 1988, a Lehigh and Ryder. Back in the day, right? And I was pumped. Yeah. I watched it every day. Yeah. Right. I was public television in 1993. I was buying VHSs oh, off yeah. of them. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Everybody wants to know why Iowa wrestling was so big. Because you go Iowa public television, you can only get, and it was always the Brand Brothers, the Bruce Brothers. The, yeah. It was always Iowa State and Iowa. Yeah. You know? yeah but that was all we could get. Like, all I could get. Dude, to get a copy of the World Championship Finals was like, oh, it was wild. I just gave so that. Wild. I just had, I, I just gave um, 2001 uh, DVDs. To a bunch of guys yeah. the other day, I'm like, "Hey, go go try to burn these on your computer." I don't even know how that works, man. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah, is there like a? I don't even know what to. I don't. Okay, um, let's let's get moving here. Uh, yep. Check this out. I'm going to ask you some questions. I want I want right off the dome what comes to your mind. Yep. What is your favorite wrestling shoe of all time? The um the uh, um 1990 the um, Oh God! They're the international lights, the black and gray international lights. I have them. Uh, they're downstairs. I have. They are dry rotted. They are stuck together with shoe goo. But yeah. I have yeah. one pair, and they always faded perfectly. Yeah. Oh, they're such great shoes. They're like uh, almost like combat speeds. Yes. Well, for the, for those, they have the bigger tongue, right? You know, yep. ninety six, they wore them in the Olympics, red the red and red, white, and blue ones. And yeah. then because Iowa was so big, Iowa had them in the black and gray. Yeah, they did. They were so dope. all those Iowa guys like 
Ironside, one of my favorites yeah. of all time. Lee Fullhart, all those guys. Man, that's great. Good call. International life. Love them. Two weeks, all right. two weeks in Sorry. a row. Two yeah, weeks that's two row. weeks in a row that somebody said uh international lights those are great dude i don't okay. like the new shoes i think i think they're terrible really i have a couple pair that are that are good i like the sly fox ones i i actually really like them um, i just okay. can't go with rudis man i i love those guys i'm just like i'm just so old acid guy man yeah, yeah 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 okay i hear you <laughs> all right um if you had a magic wand and you could change one thing about the sport of wrestling what would it be Freestyle. Thank you. Thank you so much. I literally, so, so Joel doesn't know this, but like on our uh, Instagram pages, there's this one dude that just lights me up all the time with DMs and just MFs freestyle. Right. And I'm like, it's just a more entertaining style now, oh, right now, awesome. because look, look, if you want to argue that the ball draw era was the worst, you know, that was the dark ages of wrestling. Yeah, you can do that because it was terrible. Right. However, this, the, the pace of match, the, 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 the ease at which you score and the, the frequency, it's just, it's, it's a better watch ring. It right. just is. It's awesome. um, okay. Last one. Here are the rules. Has to be American. Has to be four, only four. Who would be on your Mount Rushmore of wrestling? Tom Brandt. Got it. Remember, I'm a huge Iowa guy. Uh-huh. So, you know, I love Mark Ironside. Always did. Okay. Okay. Um, you, of course, John Smith. Uh-huh. You know, really funny story. John Smith is the only guy I ever got his autograph of. Really? He's the only one I ever wanted. Yeah. That's you cool. Know, and, 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 of course, Gable. And Gable. Right. So yeah. Ironside Brands, Gable Smith. Yeah. That's a good, that's a pretty good list. Dude. Man, that's I love cool. Ironside, man. I did a camp with him back in the day and, and I just, he was, he was graduating college and he came up to Rochester, New York, and I was still in college. I had a chance to wrestle with him a little bit and he was just an unbelievable guy. Dude, so, so from what I hear, he still gets on the mat. Yeah. He, he's an, he, he's, he's an, he's an animal, animal, dude. Just an absolute animal. Like, and like, he still goes pretty hard. Yeah. Like, Good luck, man. And, and I, would, I love Terry. I love yeah, Terry. Sure. You know, and, and my, my brother-in-law lived on Terry's couch. Is that and, right? Yeah. So that's why when I got into it with Terry last year, everybody thought it was a big deal. You know, and uh, but I have a relationship with Terry, man. It wasn't personal. No. You know what I mean? Like, like I have Terry Brands is one of the best coaches I've ever had the opportunity to sit in a corner with. Interesting. Okay. Well, I, I want to kind of go back to that real quick. People don't realize how competitive those two are. Like right. it's a real thing. And you cannot they, let them bully you. No. And that's, that's what it is. They didn't, they never knew my name until I went back at them. Yes. And then I'm like, Oh, they're just, they were testing you the whole time. That's it. I've been in I've been in Tom's house at the kitchen table eating, you know, when Brian used to live out there, we used to go out and hang out. I used to go in the Iowa room all the time. Sure. Sure. Those dudes but, are unbelievable. Don't let I I they're good dudes. They are. And, and I but I think people get a misconception that they like they if they yell at you, they don't like you. No, it's the opposite. Wow. It's the opposite. Harry um, actually after I got into it with them. Came up to me and apologized. We had a great conversation in the back. I'm sure. Well, do you remember what 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 was it about? Is that last year at NCAA's? Yes, correct. Yeah, and y'all got into it pretty good, huh? Yeah, and I love it. Like, it was all respect. He's awesome. yeah. No, He's look, awesome. man, you get heated. I, I get it. Rebin's racing, man. Rebin's racing. Hey, baby. All right, Stutz. I'm gonna Good let you go. Buddy. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming on, brother. Thank you, man. I had to miss you guys last week. No, you're good, man. No worries at all. <laughs> all right, bye. All right, fellas. Have a good one. Welcome to the Ant of the Podcast. Podcast. What do you want to know with the top guest? Right now with the project. project. What you want to know, man? What you want to know? Welcome to the Ant of the Podcast. Podcast. What do you want to know with the top guest? Right now with the project. project. What you want to know, man? Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show.